erectile dysfunction, a topic that apparently no man wants to talk about. Less than half the men who suffer from it are getting treatment for it. Well, today I'm going to talk about it. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the biology of an erection and the many, many causes of erectile dysfunction. In my next video, and the one that I'm sure most of you are really going to want to watch, I'll reveal how to address the problem and the strategies for eliminating this affliction once and for all. And believe me when I say, it can get a whole lot better. Erectile dysfunction affects as many as 52% of men, with 40% of men aged 40 and 70% of men aged 70 being afflicted. However, only 25% of men are being treated, suggesting that most of us are not reporting the affliction. Why? Because it's demoralizing and it negatively impacts our self-esteem and our self-image. So what is erectile dysfunction? Definitions vary. The clinical answer is that it is when a man can't achieve or maintain an erection sufficient for satisfactory sexual performance. Then that man has ED. However, as I said, definitions vary. As a man ages, his erections change. They become less firm. They take longer to rise and disappear more easily. Some sources claim that this is inevitable and it doesn't constitute erectile dysfunction, but rather erectile dissatisfaction. But the bottom line is, if you're not able to perform at a level that is satisfactory, either to you or your mate, the definition is less likely to be as important to you as a cure would be. But before jumping into the causes of ED, let's spend a moment talking about the biology of an erection. In the penis, there are three columns of erectile tissue, the corpa cavernosa, which run parallel to each other along the top of the penis, and the corpus spongiosum, which runs along the bottom of the penis and surrounds the urethra. During an erection, the corpa cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum, which are rich in blood vessels and lined with endothelial cells, become engorged with blood and expand, making the penis larger and firmer. The clinical name for this is called vasocongestion. Now, vasocongestion is caused by nerve impulses that are sent from one of two locations uh, in the spinal cord in response to stimuli, either physiological or psychological. The first of these is called the sacral erection center. It's located at the base of the spine and it responds to direct physical stimulation of the penis. And these are the, 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 the nerve impulses that are physiological in nature. The second is called the thoracolumbar erection center, and it's located higher in the spine. It responds to nerve impulses that are derived from sights, sounds, or fantasies that are arousing to a particular individual and are the nerve impulses that are psychological in nature. When you experience sexual arousal, the endothelial cells which line the erectile tissue of your penis release nitric oxide, or NO, which causes an increase in a chemical compound called cyclic guanosine monophosphate, or cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP causes the smooth muscles of the arteries in the erectile tissue to relax, allowing the blood to rush in. This increased volume, up to six times the normal amount, is what causes the erection, also called tumescence. The sudden swelling also causes the veins that carry the blood out of the penis to collapse, trapping the blood in the penis and causing the erection. Now, cyclic GMP is broken down or degraded <clears throat> by an enzyme called phosphodiesterase type 5, or PDE5, which is naturally expressed in the smooth muscles of the erectile tissue. As long as the sexual arousal, either physiological or psychological, continues, nitric oxide is continually released, keeping the levels of uh, cyclic GMP high and overcoming the degrading effects of the PDE5. Now, once sexual arousal ends, as with ejaculation, NO release stops. The PDE5 takes over, relaxing the veins of the erectile tissue and allowing the blood to drain from the penis. This mechanism is called detumescence. So, you want healthy endothelial tissue to release nitric oxide and you want to block the phosphodiesterase for as long as possible. 
There are two primary causes of ED, and those are either physiological or psychological. If it's a physiological, meaning that there's a problem with your plumbing, something in your body isn't working the way that it's supposed to, there are a myriad of uh, conditions that could be the underlying cause. If it's psychological, meaning that it's in your mind and it's a libido issue, then it could be caused by past trauma or some other emotional reason and is best addressed in therapy. Now, since I'm not a therapist, I'm going to be dealing strictly with the physiological causes. There's a traditional test that you can do to determine if the cause is physiological or psychological. If you get morning erections just fine, that means that your plumbing is working just fine and the problem is psychological. If you don't know if you're getting morning erections, place a, ban a band of postage stamps around your penis before you go to sleep. When you wake up, if it's broken, then you're getting morning erections and your problem is not, uh, is, is not psychological, it's, uh, I'm sorry, is not physiological, it's psychological. Okay, so now that we've gotten the biology of erections out of the way, let's move on to the causes of erectile dysfunction. And there are about eight of them. Cause number one, lifestyle. The number one cause of ED is lifestyle or how, how you go about living your life. And changing your lifestyle can often reverse or even cure ED. ED is often called the check engine light for your body. Because the blood vessels of your penis are so small compared to the job that they have to do, serious underlying conditions often manifest themselves first as ED. And there are several aspects of your lifestyle that can impact your performance in the bedroom. Exercise. Exercise is the best way to strengthen your heart and to increase your stamina, strength, and flexibility. The average heart beats about 100,000 times a day pumping about 2,000 gallons of blood throughout your body. That's the equivalent of an Olympic-sized swimming pool every year. To achieve an erection, your body requires, or your penis requires, about six times the normal amount of blood. The stronger your heart is, and the cleaner your arteries are, the more blood that will pump with each beat. And exercise is the best way to increase the efficiency of your heart. Nutrition. Poor nutrition can cause, among a variety of other things, obesity. And obesity is a primary risk factor for ED. Excess belly fat, or visceral fat, can cause a reduction in testosterone. Obesity can also cause uh, damage to the endothelial tissue in your penis, preventing the release of nitric oxide, which can in turn cause ED. A small decrease in the percentage of body fat can improve erectile dysfunction. Smoking. Men who smoke are twice as likely to experience erectile dysfunction. Smoking damages your blood vessels. Stopping smoking can improve ED in as little as two weeks uh, up to three months. Alcohol. Alcohol is a nervous system depressant and can block messaging between the brain and the body. Drinking over three glasses of alcohol a day can allow the muscles to relax, enabling the flow of blood to the penis but it can also prevent the veins from closing and trapping blood in the penis. Long-term excessive alcohol consumption can cause liver damage, high blood pressure, and can damage your blood vessels, all contributing to ED. Sleep. In addition to increasing your risks for a cardiac event, slowing your metabolism, weakening your immune system, and diminishing cognitive function, a lack of sleep can also decrease your testosterone, which in turn, can increase the likelihood of erectile dysfunction and decrease your libido. You need to both get enough sleep and to get high quality sleep. Stress. Chronic stress can lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, and uh, diabetes, all things that can foster ED. Stress can also increase the production of cortisol and it can affect blood flow and your ability to achieve and maintain an erection. Additionally, when your cortisol production is up, your testosterone production is down, and low T can lead to ED. So, exercising and getting good nutrition, getting the right amount of high-quality sleep, and eliminating smoking, alcohol, and stress from your life can dramatically improve your erectile dysfunction. Cause number two, 
age. Although there's not much you can do about your actual chronological age, the process of aging can have a big impact on your sexual performance. As we get older, we become more and more likely to have erectile dysfunction, with 70% of men in their 70s reporting ED. But if you're following this channel, then you know that I'm here to explain strategies to turn back the clock on aging, and improving erectile dysfunction is absolutely on the list of things that you can enhance. Cause three, low testosterone. Low testosterone can cause a host of problems for the aging man, and erectile dysfunction is one of the big ones. Decreases in testosterone have been linked to both lower libido as well as ED. Study after study have shown that increasing the production of testosterone can improve both of these dramatically. And there are a number of things that you can do to dramatically and naturally boost your testosterone production. Now, using these methods, I went from 350 uh, nanograms per deciliter to 970 nanograms per deciliter using a lab uh, whose reference range was 250 to 950 nanograms per deciliter, which means that I now exceed the reference range. And my erections have improved immensely, not quite as good as they were when I was in my 20s, but close. Cause number four, cardiovascular risk. Erectile dysfunction is often an early warning sign for more serious physiological problems like high blood pressure or hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and high cholesterol. The blood vessels in the penis are smaller than in the rest of the body, particularly in the heart and brain. So ED is often a first sign of high cholesterol or high blood pressure before a blockage can cause more serious problems like a heart attack or a stroke. If you, have an existing, uh, if you have existing risk factors for heart disease like diabetes, obesity, high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, or a family history of heart disease, and you have ED, it might be a good idea to schedule a checkup. Improving heart health and blood flow can result in better and more frequent erections. Cause number five, medically induced ED. Many of the most commonly prescribed medications as well as over-the-counter drugs, list ED as a possible side effect, and they can decrease libido and interfere with blood flow. Medications that commonly cause ED include SSRIs, beta blockers, blood pressure meds, diuretics, antifungals, antihistamines, muscle relaxants, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If you're experiencing ED, a frank discussion with your doctor about the medications that you take can lead to alternative medications and a better discussion about your ED. Just remember, um, do not stop taking your prescription medications without consulting with your physician. Cause number six, recreational drugs. I hate to say it, but almost all recreational drugs have been implicated in ED alcohol and nicotine, as I mentioned earlier, but also marijuana, amphetamines, barbiturates, cocaine, methadone, and opiates. And they don't just suppress the nervous system. They also can damage your blood vessels. And any damage to your blood vessels or to your normal blood flow will eventually cause ED. So you need to weigh the risks of ED against whatever pleasure you might derive from recreational drug use. Cause number seven, diabetes. Diabetes can and does cause vascular complications throughout the human body, and the penis is no exception. Studies have found that the majority of men with diabetes over the age of 55 have ED, and most of them have never been asked about their sexual function. So if you have diabetes, you need to have a talk with your doctor about ED. Cause number eight, cycling. And finally, we get to cause number eight. That's right cycling. Although this is controversial, research does show a link between cycling and ED. Cycling puts pressure on your pudendal artery, which can lead to penile numbness and erectile dysfunction. The pudendal artery supplies blood to the sex organ, the perineum, and all the structures in that area. So if you're cycling a lot and you're experiencing ED, this might be something to take a look at with your doctor. Okay, there are my top eight causes of erectile dysfunction, and almost every one of them is something that you can change
to improve your ED. Now, in my next video, I'll explain how to do just that. Next week, I'll be talking about several strategies that you can do to either improve or actually cure your erectile dysfunction. So be sure to come back next week and catch that video. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it interesting or educational, then please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and on your social media, and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Tuesday. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.